Hello my friends, today's topic is minimalism. It's one of my favorite topics since I'm a big fan of this minimalistic lifestyle since 2013. How did minimalism came into my world? Well, first of all, when I was growing up in my house, we usually uh, every Sunday we used to clean the house completely and we were all involved in that. And it was a really large, large apartment. So there was a lot of things to do. And another thing we did monthly and with every new season is to clean our basement. We had a really large basement and to clean our closets to prepare for a new season and to see what we will be taking to the new season next year and what we will be giving away. So since I was a child, I was always used to that. And the whole idea behind it was let's give those that uh, don't have these things, the things that we don't no longer use, whether they are small or we grew because we were young. So we used to grow like really fast or maybe we just didn't even like it anymore. Or sometimes even we didn't even use it so much anymore. Uh, one of those things was, I remember I bought it from Topshop. Uh, <laughs> it was a thing to make your uh, stomach have six pack. So obviously <laughs> that, that is one of those things that you buy and you never use. So I gave it away one season. It was in my elementary school when I was trying to lose weight and it was so funny. But from now, <laughs> it was very painful back then. But so this uh, thing, that this little ritual we had in my family gave me this idea that giving away things brings joy to you and to the other human, so why not? And another issue for me that caused me to embrace the minimalistic lifestyle and to have this effect when people come to my house, I ask, where is all your stuff? How is it so clean? Did you do this today? Or is it always like this? It's like a hotel. Uh, this is because I have allergies, pollen allergies, and I need to keep my house always clean so I don't, uh, ha don't sneeze and don't just cause even more uh, allergies by dust. And this is another reason why I'm very motivated to keep my house clean and tidy at all times. And then the third reason was the whole traveling that I did for five years, changing cities every three months and basically living out of my suitcase that made me realize that I always needed less stuff than I packed. And this, after a few years and a few trips, I realized that I'm just going to travel with a carry-on. And if I move for a year, then I bring one big suitcase and it is always, it is always enough. So let me tell you a little story about what will minimalism and embracing this idea into your life and practicing it bring you and what it brought me. First, it made me learn to say goodbye to things more easily and to realize that things are just things. They are not, um, they do have sometimes sentimental va value, uh, but again, the sentimental value goes down the drain when I think about if I have a jacket that is sentimental value and if there is a kid in the winter outside begging for money without a jacket, I think more sentiment will be caused and more joy in my and his life if I gave that, give that jacket away than if I keep it in my basement to collect dust just because I really liked that jacket when I was five years old. So that is how I manage the emotional part. And that is uh, what this minimalism will um, bring into your life. And that is the ability to make hard decisions very fast. And the more decisions you make, the better you become at making decisions. And for me personally, being great and decision making saves me a lot of time and energy and therefore enables me to make a lot more money than people who are overthinking things daily. We all have limited time in the day and limited energy level. And we spend it on stupid things like what am I going to wear and what am I going to eat? I've been wearing and eating pretty much same things for five years and I always look good and I'm good, in good shape. I don't gain weight. And why, do I, why does that happen? Because if I start gaining weight, I remember, oh, but you won't have anything to wear. And I don't plan to buy clothes for a version of myself that I don't want to be. I only have currently in my closet clothes for the current and my dream version of myself, which is me now. And I want to stay at this weight. And wh why is that important? Because with minimalism, you won't really have a choice. If you see that you are going off the wagon, you will soon realize 
wait, I don't have anything to wear if I gain two kilograms, so I might as well, you know, calm down and stop overeating and realize why am I overeating in the first place, because it's not because I'm hungry, <laughs> definitely. Second thing that minimalism brought to my life is just this idea of saying a goodbye to things that once were valuable to you, and this can be applied to friendship, businesses, and everything else in your life, so this is a major thing. And what is also interesting that minimalism brought to a lot of my friends that I've shared this idea with and the books about it and um, like book like Essentialism or book like uh, Zen uh, from the blog Zen Habits, the blog Simplify blog post, uh, it helped them lose weight. And I don't know how this is connected, but basically a lot of them that started tidying up their apartments and their closet, they started changing also their diet and their habits. And it helped them lose weight, which really mind-blowing for me. But what I've noticed, which is a bit bizarre, is especially when I go to somebody's place for the first time, the more things the person has in their apartment, the bigger they are. And the less money they have on their account, the more shit they have at their apartment, which they are not even using. How is this so fucked up? You know, like the less money you have, the more you want to acquire things to feel worthy and then you want to also protect yourself from actually facing your shit and making some really difficult decisions and you do that by hiding in both your fat and both the stuff that is bizarre what our minds can do really really bizarre so it's very interesting and pay attention to that if when we, you talk about when you see your friends I mean, don't tell them that, but just think about it. Is it really true in your life as well? And let me know. I'm really interested in that. That the less money people have, the more stuff they have. And the more stuff they have, the more obese they are. This is very interesting to me personally. Because I love observing things and just analyzing. It's, it's very, very interesting, as I said five times. <laughs> so uh, how to begin? Where to start from? Start by just, as Marie Kondo says, take everything out from your closet, put it outside, put it on a bed or somewhere, and ask yourself, do I need this thing right now? Do I use this thing right now? Do I want to use this thing in the future? Would I buy this today? And is this thing broken or is this thing something that needs to be uh, cleaned or checked or sued or whatever? So why is this important? Because sometimes the sentimental things, you will think, yeah, yeah, I need this. I got this as a gift. Uh, but wait a second. If you're not using it, you don't need it. So don't lie. <laughs> so <laughs> go through those questions and see if the things that you have are serving you or why are you holding on to them if not? Everything you have should be serving you, whether it's a book, whether it's a frying pan, whether it's sneakers. And all of those things should really be a match to your personal life values. So what do I mean when I say this? There is a reason I don't have a lot of utensils in my home. I live with my boyfriend, we don't have kids, and we are into a very healthy lifestyle. So why would I buy, for example, a cocktail mixer when we don't drink alcohol at all? Or why would I buy a lot of different frying pans when the only thing I fry is my omelet every day for the last five years. And why would I buy things that I don't need, such as muffin tray or something when we don't eat grains? So think about what you personally eat, do, and what you want to achieve. And if something doesn't really align with your life values, give it away. You don't need to set yourself up for failure. And you don't, sh you shouldn't be keeping things that you don't use or don't plan to use or don't align with your life values. Because if you keep a toaster and you want to re get rid of bread, why would you set yourself up? You know what I mean? Okay, if you have kids who eat bread, you do that. But you understand the point. This toaster story is just an illustration. If you've decided to stop eating flour, just get rid of the toaster bread, toaster and the bread, you know? Don't set yourself up. Life is full of things that will make it harder. Don't make it harder on yourself. Another thing that minimalism brought me and that can help you with is realizing why would you use something that is so old and that it doesn't bring you joy and it makes you feel like very poor when you use it, such as 
old shitty towels or old uh, like bed, bed covers or pillowcases. You know, this maybe sounds stupid, but to me personally, that made such a difference when I was leveling up in my financial and business aspect of my life. I invested in silk silo, sil, uh, silk uh, pillowcases and in clothes and in also the little things that bring me joy, such as really expensive, luxurious towels. And that has made a big difference because it just brings my vibe up. When I take a shower, I don't have 10 towels. We have four, two of us. And I love every one of them. They are all the same color, so they can be washed together. They are white and fluffy and amazing. And the same goes for the things you use to like wash around the house to clean. Invest in the useful and good ones that last you a long time. Don't buy the crappy ones to save money. Because don't save on those things that actually are worthy. Save on the junk that you don't use. Where can you go with all this stuff when you start cleaning up? You can give it away to your friends, you can bring them to a shelter house, or you can sell them. I personally do not sell them at all. The reason being, it's been years since I had more stuff than I need. And another reason is that it takes time. And my time is much, much, much more expensive than these things that I can sell on a secondhand shop. So just give it away. It will bring you so much joy. There is no amount of money that will bring me that much joy. I Trust me. Just practice, try it out and see for yourself. Another thing that will help you out when you are just starting with minimalism and once you clean your closet and realize like me seven years ago that you now have nothing because basically you have five things when you really answer honestly, do I need this? Do I use this? Do I want this? Would I buy today again? And I was there and very confused, like, what do I do now? And what helped me was an advice from a friend that said, buy something for a person you are becoming. So I went and I bought a really expensive fitness gear, like for bodybuilding, to just motivate myself to go regularly to the gym and to get some goals that I've been postponing to make them happen. And this helped me a lot because whenever I put that gym clothes on, I felt very powerful, strong, and very eager to go and head out and do my exercise. So maybe for you, it's not a gym clothes. Maybe for you, it's a new laptop or a book or something else like high heels. If you want to feel, I don't know, whatever you're looking for, how you're looking to feel, find that, that will help you to get into that mood faster and to create it faster in your life. What are the things that you will forget to clean up maybe? Basement, your car, maybe if you have an attic, also a work desk, a laptop. Yeah, let's clean up those folders. Old pictures, photographs, and old documents. This is crucial, especially if you we are talking about, if you're over 18 years old, you really need to have documents backup. I'm talking your passport, a birth certificate, and things like that. And what I highly recommend to anyone who has a business and who is over 20 years old to have their will. What happens if you die, if it's an emergency, you need to have a testament, you need to have a will, and you need to have your passports, uh, informations, and passwords in one fo folder, which is basically a folder when you die, what can people do? I have this and this is something I highly recommend where it's basically everything is written down, what goes to whom and what I want for my funeral and what are the passwords and what are the documents. So I don't want to mess up other people's life when I'm gone and to clean up after my shit for years. Like people do when they die, they leave shit behind them. And in sh by shit, I mean a lot of stuff, a lot of misplaced documentation and they just make this horrible for people who are still alive to just go for a year and to go and figure out what they've been up to you know why why do that when it's just it's like two hours of your day just do it you know it's it's a little thing that will make a big difference when you're gone 
another thing that happens when my friends start cleaning and asking these questions in that they say a lot of times when I go to their houses and they call me to practice that in front of me because they know it will be funny and I will always laugh at them and make jokes is they tell me I don't know if I need this and I'm like dude that means no because remember that time you said you're not sure about that guy that turned out to be a jerk well you're not now not sure about this shirt so the shirt is out and they laugh and that's such a good point because really I don't know I'm not sure that is just no don't don't make it something it's not uh, another question is like, what if I need this again? So if you have something that is like winter skiing equipment and you haven't been skiing for 10 years, then dude, you can borrow it if you decide to go skiing again. You can buy it. If you cannot afford it, you can borrow it. Just don't obsess over it. The same goes for like exclusive dresses and things you never wear. If you want to go to an event, you will always want to go in a different dress. So you can just rent a dress, borrow it from a friend, from your mom or whom ever you know whosever size you can fit in and just don't don't use this excuse it's stupid we are 2020 like you can buy and borrow anything online there is really no re reason for you to live as a hoarder just because you have bad the mind management really it's, it's only about the mind management it's nothing else you will have such a better life with less stuff than i can even explain to you i i promise you that Last thing I want to say about minimalism. I feel that the benefits that you will gain when you embark on this journey and embrace this lifestyle is freedom of your mind, peace, cleanliness, joy. Everything you want to wear is beautiful and new or maybe not new, but it looks like it's new. I have things that are five years old. In, they are very high quality and very very luxurious feel even if they weren't expensive i want to touch them and feel wow this is so amazing i want to wear this i feel beautiful in this so that is the effect we want not oh this is okay no i feel amazing in this or just give it away so you will have an a basically whole house that breathes you will have free space not everything has to be cluttered you will know exactly what you can wear at what occasion you will know exactly if you need to buy something, what is it and why and in which color and which size. And you will know exactly what you should, you should always borrow, which is basically exclusive dresses and some activities that you want to go like mountain climbing or skiing or snorkeling. You can rent it. You don't need to own stuff. I love to go on a vacation in a luxurious seaside house. I don't want to own the house. It's too big of an expense and I would use it only once a year. So I prefer to rent or borrow from my rich friends that have those kind of houses that they don't even use. And they are very joyful when I use them because they say, oh good, I didn't waste money. At least you are enjoying their, your time. And I also do the same thing. Whenever I have something someone wants to borrow, here you go. Because it's just energy. It's like things go around. It's fine. You know, you don't have to own things to feel rich. Because you feeling rich and being rich comes from the opposite. You just have to own your mind to feel your emotions, to have a great mind management and to feel freedom to be who you are and to make a decision who you want to be and become. And then your whole environment should be basically your support, your infrastructure that will help you reach your goals. And if you live in a messy house, if you wear clothes that look bad on you, or if you feel bad wearing that clothes, if they're not the right size or they're washed, washed out color, you will not be stepping into the best version of yourself and for me minimalism is something that just helps me make fast decisions be more of who i already am and be closer to a version of myself i want to become